I want to do a quick overview of a General Assembly session since we're in the early stages of the session. It's sort of a little like preseason football when everybody's undefeated and everybody thinks they can you know, go to the national championship. You know, we're happy to say that nearly all of the, the, the ideas that we put forward in our legislative agenda are now in Bill 4, which is a good start. That doesn't mean you're going to get passed in one house or the other or signed by the governor, but at least you got to have it in bill form to get it passed. So I wanted to go through some of those. Uh, education is a huge issue this year, as, as most years. Uh, we sort of think it's a no-brainer that we increase the cap on the tuition tax credit scholarship program, a very successful program. Uh, the average cost of these scholarships around $3,500 when the state's spending about $11,000 on education to save taxpayers money. We went through the cap of $58 million in one day this year. I think in about five hours, we, we filled up the $58 million. So we need to expand that tax credit. Another new idea we just published a paper on, a bill has been introduced, was debated last week, is education savings accounts. This is a great way of putting parents in charge, providing several different options. Uh, been used for special education kids in Arizona and Florida. Been expanded in Arizona to cover some other children. Basically, they receive 90% of the state's funding. They can use it for private tuition. They can use it for tutoring. They can use it for special services. And if they save money, it forces them to be good consumers. If the money is saved and it rolls over, they can even use it for college tuition. Uh, we think this is a great idea, particularly in combination with tuition tax credit scholarships. So that's going to be interesting to watch that idea as it moves through the session. Move on when ready. Uh, Senate Bill 2 is flying through. I think mean, it's already been passed in the Senate. That's a great idea we've been talking about for three or four different years. I know uh, Dean offered, we had Move On When Ready 1, but it required you when you wanted to enroll as uh, after you were 16 into a higher education institution, you had to physically move to that institution. I remember Dean Alford saying, you know, that we found out that, you know, high school quarterbacks all often don't get really good until their senior year. And uh, so this allows the individual to stay in school, participate in extracurricular activities at that high school while they're enrolling in higher education at the same time. We think that makes a lot of sense. And uh, it's a great idea, and we hope that's going to pass. Finally, the governor has created... Uh, talked about two things, Education Reform Commission, which is going to look primarily at the funding formula that was passed when I was a uh, senior in high school and it hasn't really been amended since. We think that's going to go a long way to giving more predictability and transparency for traditional schools, but also address some of our funding issues with our charter schools and online schools. And second, he wants to pass a constitutional amendment to create an opportunity school district. Many of you were here when we brought in Matt Candler from New Orleans. Matt's a native of Atlanta, and he was really key in creating the recovery school district in New Orleans. And he runs an organization called 4.0 that supports teachers and innovation in New Orleans. And they've had some great results. They admit they've gone from F to C minus. They're not where they need to be, but they have seen improvement. So we think there are a lot of details to work out as we discuss this bill going through the, the session, but it's a good idea to be discussing. In healthcare, uh, whether we expand Medicaid or not, we are going to have uninsured individuals in our state. And Georgia, a lot of people don't realize, we have one of the largest and most successful charity care clinics networks in the country. Privately funded uh, networks that provide care to indigent and uninsured individuals, a lot of times in rural communities, and do a great job of saving taxpayers money because these individuals aren't going to the emergency room. Uh, we've supported a bill that we called for this for several years, creating a tax credit similar to the tuition tax credit program, only about $2 million, but it would go a long way to helping these rural clinics expand their services and serve more people. And every time we keep someone out of the emergency room, it, it saves us money. Civil asset forfeiture has been something that was in the news uh, last few years. Uh, it, it's something that uh, is an important issue. Uh, the sheriffs and others, the reformers haven't been able to see eye to eye. There is a compromise that's been worked out. We think it's not everything we would like, but it's great progress in terms of reporting and transparency. So we hope we make some progress on civil asset forfeiture this year. 
My understanding is there will be a tax reform bill to uh, lower the state's uh, income tax, and, but we'll wait to see what that's going to look like. I also understand there's going to be a pension reform bill. Uh, many people don't realize this, but back uh, all state employees hired after 2008 or 2009 have gone into a hybrid pension plan, which is mainly a defined contribution plan. You haven't heard much about it because it's been very successful. Everyone that's in it, in my understanding, has been very happy with it. So we're looking at doing the same thing for newly hired teachers, which we think makes a lot of sense. And it gives them immediate vestment. So teachers that transfer right now, it takes 10 years for teachers to vest in our current system. So if you move to another state before you vest, you've lost all that money. Uh, so younger teachers really like these plans better, polls show. So we think that's a, a wise, fiscally responsible, and a good idea to attract young teachers. Finally, regulation. Uh, we are seeing several bills where you have incumbent providers that are protected by regulation that are coming up against competition from innovative new providers. <clears throat> so the state is being forced to decide how are we going to address this? Are we going to balance the playing field? Are we going to balance it up and put regulations evenly on everyone? Or are we going to balance it down and deregulate and rely more on consumer choice? One of those is regarding beer. Our beer uh, breweries in Georgia have one, I think, the fifth most restrictive rules in the country. Uh, when you go visit a winery in Georgia, you can take home a case of wine. But you go visit a brewery in Georgia, you can't take home a six-pack. It doesn't seem to make sense. And it's a huge tourist opportunity. North Carolina's killing us on this. They have these craft beer tours in North Carolina that are very, very successful. We've had a lot of craft breweries spring up in the last few years in Atlanta and all across the state. So that's a great tourism opportunity. We think those regulations could be loosened. Same thing with Uber and Lyft. Many of you have taken these services. Very important to the debate we're having today because, as you know, Atlanta is not like New York City and Boston. If you need to get somebody where you don't have a car, you can't just hail a cab in most situations. And with Uber, you can see where the cab is, you know it's, it's very affordable, and it's far more consumer friendly and more people are using it. So that means more people are free to take transit, to be without a car, because they know they can get where they need to go. So we need to make sure that these regulations are fair. We need to look at insurance on, on Uber drivers. I have a daughter, I let her take Uber, but I only let her take the black car, because I know their background checks perform and there's more insurance. That's a choice I make. You have to debate those issues. Level the playing field and do it in a, in a good way. There's a great debate to be had. But these kind of innovations are exactly the kind of thing we need to improve transportation. And finally, Tesla, another automotive issue where they're trying to develop a completely unique automobile distribution system that sort of flies in the face of our current distribution system. Should they be allowed to do so or not? Who is that going to harm or not? Those are great debates to have. And finally, there's a few little transportation issues that are being talked about, which we're going to spend the rest of our morning discussing. <coughs>